Well, it turns out my plan that I thought I had thought out so well is uh, not the case. Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to the garage. Hope everybody had a good week. Um, it's now the weekend. Hopefully you guys all enjoy yours. Um, unfortunately, I have to work. Or fortunately, whichever way you want to look at it. You know, it's a catch-22. Uh, it's one of them good slash bad things. You know, it's good you get to work, make some money, but it's bad because you lose your whole weekend. But anyhow, so tonight I'm starting off, I already depinned the main connector of this harness we've been fucking with. Um, just got a couple of things off there and somebody had commented today about this depinning tool. They're wondering where I got it. I just got it off the Amazon. I'll try and remember to put a link in the description. Try and remember to put a link in the, in the description of this particular one, but they have a bunch of different ones. They're like 10 bucks, you know, it's not a big deal, but uh, definitely helping me out because a lot of these connectors are much smaller than any screwdrivers or picks that I have. So that's where you can find those cheap and readily available. They're prime, so you can get them within like two days. Um, but so the game plan for tonight is we talked about this thing in depth last night and how all these wires were not necessary really just these three right here is all we were going to need in order to get um, reverse and neutral functions of our transmission so our reverse lights work and you know it indicates reverse so if i'm not the one driving it they know but i figured we should prove that out and since the other harness that goes inside the truck is not complete yet i've been working on that in the house i'm slowly picking away at it and uh Anyway, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to lop these wires off. I'm going to strip these, and uh, we're going to put those on Caitlin and see if we can prove that my theory or what we were figuring out last night works. So that's the game plan to start off with. And then after that, I, my plan is to just kind of go through the harness and get rid of all the wires, depin this main connector, depin anything we don't need, loom it back up, and hopefully get it reinstalled back in the truck um, and also obviously clean up this whole mess here and get everything just done under there wiring wise so we can go back to the cab and like I was saying in the previous video get everything as sorted as we can there with the wiring and then jump to the back here with our fuel cell air move the air dog battery all that kind of good stuff because I definitely was starting to get in more of a taking apart mode rather than a take apart fix mode which is really where i'd rather be because it could be a week till we get the torque converter and transmission back it could be you know monday it could be two weeks i don't know but i would like to have the truck at least somewhat ready to go by then so we can take it out test it and then get back to kind of fully gutting the truck and just kind of keep it in a semi um, operational state during the whole process once we get the transmission back so that's game plan let's get to it sorry it's more wires so currently the transmission um, wire harness is disconnected from the transmission here on Caitlin. And if we look, P R N D. My tenant won't pay me the P R N D are all lit up. So I'm going to plug our harness in here that I've cut down. This is our number five pin, which if we only have number five, will give us reverse. And then when we ground these two with it as well, we should have neutral. So I'll plug it in and ground number five. And then I will throw an alligator clip onto these two, which I believe are pin four and eight. And we will see it should be read reverse. And then when I ground this one out with it, it should read neutral. Well, 
Well, it turns out my plan that I thought I had thought out so well is uh, not the case. As you can see, I didn't even think about the fact that what I cut was off the wire harness, and that's what I took off the truck. So uh, let me take a minute to reevaluate. After a few minutes, here's what I came up with. Um, I stuck two wires in there for pin four and eight, and they're together. And on this alligator clip, which is not currently connected to anything. And then on the other alligator clip, I have pin five. And that I have grounded to this ground up here. So now when I put the key in, it should read reverse if everything's right. And then when I take this alligator clip and ground it out, we should see neutral. Here goes nothing. Hmm. That didn't seem to pan out. Um, wonder if I need to reset the Minimax. Look at that. Got just reverse once I cleared the codes. So, that proves that. Now when I ground this alligator clip, we should see neutral. Look at that. Neutral, reverse. Neutral, reverse. Reverse. Neutral, reverse. Well, boys and girls, I think uh, think that's a uh, good to go. I think we got her figured out. Look at that. Just a little ground action and everything changes. All right, so let's plug this harness back in on Caitlin, get our codes reset. And before we go any further, we do have one more thing to do to Caitlin real quick. What we were talking about last night was correct. Um, it's kind of a success, so we can get rid of all the wires other than those three and then figure out, you know, how we're going to go about that, you know, add a relay or whatever we got to do in order to make that reverse light and the whole drive indicator system work, at least how we have it currently, but without that box and without all that extra shit. So, that being said, at the end of that little uh, experiment, we'll call it, I said there's a little more to do to Caitlin. Well, if you guys remember when we went out to UCC, we had a little problem. We kept losing our trailer. We didn't have a trailer. Um, just the computer kept telling me that the trailer was disconnected. Um, you know, there was like a brake controller fault. Um, check four-wheel drive. Well, we've been driving her ever since with no issues. And I've been researching it, and nobody has a definitive answer. So one day on my way to work, I unplugged the brake controller. Uh, brake controller. I un unhooked the. I unhooked the harness from the brake controller. God, I'm stumbling all over myself. So anyway, I unhooked it. Didn't didn't make anything better. It just changed what the the issue was. Um, plugged it back in, and it was the same thing. And typically with our situation, it would be fine in the morning. I'd start the truck. Typically, the remote start won't work. Sometimes it will, but it, that won't work. But we'll start the truck. No, nothing. About halfway on my way to work, and it's only about a half hour, so about 15 minutes into the drive, we get the fault. So after that, I disconnect the batteries for like 10 or 20 minutes. No luck, same thing. So then I re-uploaded our Minimax, our MCC custom tune, just saying, hey, you know, maybe we need to just reflash it. Same thing, didn't solve the issue. So another simple, cheap thing to try and figure this out that I found on the line was people were saying the batteries. When the batteries start to go bad, apparently that can make shit a little haywire. We're going to change the batteries on Caitlin, but we're not going to buy new batteries just yet. I have the two right here that have been sitting on the trickle charger, and I did throw the one on the trickle charger that was in the race truck here for the most part. But that and the one that came, with, other one that came with it, are sitting on the trickle charger. They are. Where is the box? All charged up here, as you can see ready to go so we'll throw them in there see if that changes anything hopefully it does and we found our issue now i said that we're going to you know change the batteries i have actually changed one of these batteries uh i know the light's bad but that's a duralast battery so one of my batteries this one on the driver's side it just took a shit a couple years ago 
wasn't that old um was leave left me actually stranded well not stranded i just had to have somebody come jump me because it was draining down things real bad but the truck was still new enough that i really didn't want to spend the money on two new batteries the passenger side battery checked out fine so we just went and got one battery put one battery in it um which is i know not recommended typically if you have one battery go bad it's eventually going to take the other one out so maybe that's what happened it created a bad cell in here i don't know so we'll pull these two batteries we'll put those on trickle charge and put the ones that came in the race truck in caitlin and we'll see if that fixes the issue The race truck batteries are in Caitlin. We'll see how that does on my way to and from work the next few days. See if that sorts everything out, which hopefully it does. In the meantime, I am I was going to put these on trickle charge, but I think what I'm going to do overnight is I'm going to check the voltage. I'll put a little note on them, check them again tomorrow, see how much they drop. Maybe one of them is bad. Uh, this is an original battery. And that's a Duralast battery. Um, reason I have Duralast battery is I've had very good luck with those. That is what is in the blue truck and has been for years. Um, it was dead as a doornail, couldn't jump it or anything, put it on a trickle charger, brought it back to life, and it's been good ever since. Blue truck still starts right up. So uh, Duralast batteries have definitely been good to me. So I'll do that and then We'll get back to our wiring. I'm going to get rid of all these transmission wires. We'll run everything up to the top here, deep in the main harness, hopefully, and then reloom this and hopefully get it back installed in the engine compartment. Well, we managed to get rid of a whole shitload of wires. I mean, there's just wires out the ass. Um, this connector was actually one of the easiest I've de-pinned so far. So basically, there's this little snap here. Undo that, and the back cover comes off. And with my tool, and it was... Let's see if I can... This one right here. This smaller, but not the smaller of the blades. You just stuck that in the littler slot on the side of the pin here. The big slot's where your actual connector would go. The little one next to it um, is where I would shove that in. And then the connector would pull out the back. Really, the hardest part was just figuring out which one you needed to do. So, I got it pretty well zip-tied up. I still have to put some split loom or I have that uh, tape stuff. I, I can't remember it's what it's called. I have some rolls of this. I'll have to you know, look that up, see what it's called again. But I have some of that so we can reloom our, our wire harness. I do have our three wires. Doo -doo. Three wires for our indication here separate. So we'll loom them to a certain point um, together and then we'll split those off get everything back in the truck which i want to do tonight but it just it's getting late i'm getting tired so rather than screwing anything up i figure it's a good point to stop but yeah it definitely is a lot cleaner than it was missing that big 68 rfe plug which where is it got rid of this connector that goes to the 68 rfe um and all these wires that zip tied together are gone and we just have these three right here left for our indication. So very uh, successful wiring night. It wasn't too stressful, which is good because as I'm sure I've said multiple times and I'm sure you agree, this fucking wiring's getting old. So the plan is to get this harness back in the truck, get it all sorted, get the one for inside the truck sorted, and basically I want to work my way back the battery just died on the GoPro, so I'll just kind of start over. I'm not exactly sure where it will have left off. But anyway, my plan is to kind of start at the front of the truck, 
you know, with this harness and put it back together, put it in. And as far as like I was talking about putting an electric water pump in, we're going to hold off on that and kind of pull back on that because it's not holding us back at this point. It's not something that needs done. And that's something we can do in a matter of a few days. So I'll probably get the, the AC compressor delete pulley, get all that stuff, put that in for now. Um, or at least have it here ready to go and like I said get this harness in get the interior sorted out um, figure out how I'm going to mount my gauges and all that get that wiring harness sorted out then we can jump back here get our fuel cell sorted out once we have the fuel cell all good and and set up you know we can move our air dog we can put our battery back there and I guess my basic plan is to try and get the truck, and I like I said earlier, just try and get it so it's ready to go when the transmission gets here, or at least closer. The cage, we're definitely going to have to do the cage, but if we get the transmission back and the truck's ready to go, hey, why not take it to the track again? Um, technically, we are illegal, but they haven't seemed to give us a problem yet. Uh, I think it's anything under 11.5, but there's a weird rule with... Vehicles old or newer than 08 and well anyhow it seems like until you get below a 10.5 they don't really seem to hassle you there at Cecil so we can go back maybe get the truck kicked out that would make for uh, some interesting conversation you know trucks too fast for a truck anyhow that's kind of my basic game plan I just want to get the truck back together nothing we're doing is drastic enough that it should keep us from being able to do anything with the truck a week after say the transmissions back so I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did big give it a big thumbs up subscribe to the channel I'll catch you guys in the next one get out in your garage how do I screw that up get out in your garage get the wrench on your truck